Hello, buddy. So Walter, so Walter Jones show. I'm here. Y'all doing all right? Good, good, good. Listen, I'm on my way to a gala next week or this the week that you're watching this. So I am in finals week at Moody Bible Institute. And so I will not be going live. And so you'll be seeing pre-recorded shows here. Uh, and so today, hopefully this is Theology Thursday uh, at the time that you're watching it live, live pre-recorded. We're talking about fools. Fools rush in where wise men fear to tread. Wonderful song I used to listen to when I was a young man. Something about fools, because fools even say in their heart, there is no God. And I would look at, I would listen to p- people, and, I, and then the more they talk, I say, keep talking. I'm examining you. You examining me? Yes. I want to find out if you're a fool. And then once I find out you're a fool, how big of a fool are you? Because the fool continues to open their mouth and they can't sit down and pay attention to the instruction scripture all throughout the Bible talks about don't be quick uh, to be to to anger but be you should be quick to be quiet <laughs> you want to be able to listen and hear out the whole matter as the, uh, the proverbial sayings even through uh, Solomon in Ecclesiastes there's a time to speak and there's a time to shut up Let's talk about that <laughs> in 60. You good. You good. You good. You good. Don't stop it. Bass. 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 It's the show that will get you thinking and where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment whether we agree or not. Cause he- A week, always on time, but this time is not free. So Walter Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics had you jumping out your seat. He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones show. I'm here. It is the evening edition, baby. Did I do that at the beginning? I might have. I can't keep. I can't keep up with myself. Listen, um, uh, there are some proverbs here that I want to share with you that I think they're kind of funny to me. Um, one in particular, if you turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter twenty-nine, this is a good one. Twenty-nine and eleven. What does it say? Fools vent their anger, but the wise quickly hold it back. A fool will continue to vent. Yada yada yada. The wise quickly hold back it's not that easy to hold back when someone is saying stuff to uh, about you someone is uh, bashing you they're pushing you they're trying to get you you know to to be violent especially when it comes to men and women that's not this show (laughs) they will press a button knowing that that button will set you off person who's pressing that button is in, is, is in sin because the scripture says when you provoke someone, even when it comes to you who are fathers, don't provoke your son to anger. It turned out to hate you. That's a sin. So we who are provoking people are sinning and the people who is provoked is a sinner too. So we need to get to be able to, we, we need to try our best to quell that anger. It's, it's okay to be angry. But the scriptures also say, don't sin. So this is why when I'm in certain situations, I don't be the first one to speak. When people call me for these um, panels, um, uh, it's typically a woman who's calling all these men to panels, the panel of men on the stage and women in the audience. They ask men questions and, and they walk up to the mic. I never answer first. I let the men talk. And I always, always try and wait to be the last one to answer why I want to hear what these men say and I want to hear which one of these men up here is a fool <laughs> and I want to I want to be able to gather up as much information as I can 
And I always tell the bunkers, act like lawyers. Act like you're a good trial lawyer. So as you could, you, you're studying uh, to try to defend, uh, you know, in, you're interrogating the text, but you, you're, so if you're a lawyer, you're trying to defend your client by learning as much as you can about the client, but you also need to learn as much as you can about the opposing side. So I think that the scripture that, that comes up that I think is one of my favorites is Proverbs chapter 18 and 17. Look what it says. It's so apropos. The first to speak in court sounds right. Until the cross examination begins. <laughs> ooh, 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 Mr. Cartel. I never wanted to be that guy. I never was that guy. The first one to speak, he or she sounds right. Until the cross-examination. They, uh, before all this indicting stuff that was happening with Donald Trump, the Democrats were able to impeach him, not once, but twice. They were so excited when they did this. And they were trying to show the hypocrisy of uh, the right, the, the uh, conservative right, uh, these, um, the Republicans, basically, in that court case. And it was so funny to me because while I'm watching this, the Republicans then, they spoke. It was their turn. It was, it was Donald Trump's lawyer's turn to you know, speak up for him. And they went back into the vault and they went back and found MSNBC, CNN, ABC, all of the liberal media. They gathered up all of those men and women uh, and these commentators and these newscasters on how they their voices were very violent. Kill them. Or, no, or they didn't say kill, but someone was like, I, I'll beat the so and so out of them. I'll do this to them. And they were they were saying, listen, you all are hypocrites. Which y'all talking about how violent Trump is. But look at your your terminologies. We need to do something. We need to do this. And their, their words, uh, you know, and I keep telling people, when if you're going to say anything or put anything on Facebook or YouTube or any type of social media, it's there forever. It's there forever. <laughs> Once you say it, it has already been captured by the other side. Man, they gathered up all this stuff and they played a montage of all of these liberal media news back to back to back. And I was like, oh, my God, this is horrible. This is horrible. Why? Because these other the, the liberals wanted to be first in their attack until the prosecution came. <laughs> all right. And so this is this is how I decide. How to talk to people. Don't wait until they exhaust themselves. It's the rope-a-dope effect with uh, Muhammad Ali had his opponent in the ring and his opponent was going crazy, going crazy on Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali just held up his, his hands like that and he just was blocking all the blows, blocking all the blows and the opponent, the opponent just tired himself out. And once Muhammad Ali realized he was tired, then it was time. Bam! <laughs> Bam, bam, rope a dope. <laughs> okay, a thriller in vanilla. This is the way I do when I'm talking to someone and they're calling it a debate. And you can call it a debate all you want to, but this ain't not. This is not a debate. This is a fool talking, and to a person who's wise, I let them yap, 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 yap. Are you done? <laughs> you done? All right now, it's my time. So it's always good when you're talking to a fool. Let a fool tire himself out, because then. The more they talk, the more you can examine them. And then you, you're gathering up all these mental notes. And then when they're done, it's time to go in for the kill. That's what animals do. When they chomp down on the neck of a gazelle, a, a lion or a tiger or a bear, oh my. They just let him just buck and he, he's fighting. And he, he, that, that, that kill gets so tired and then time to break the bone. <laughs> this is how I've operated for many years. So let's look at what this, this thing called Proverbs is, because uh, maybe we don't know what it is. A good definition of a biblical Proverbs is a short saying that expresses a general truth for practice, uh, for practical godly living. The Hebrew word translated proverb comes from the root word meaning to be like, or thus the book of Proverbs is full of comparisons showing us how various images illustrate the fundamental truths of life. It's a fundamental truth. Be careful when you're reading the Proverbs. The purpose of the Proverbs is to present wisdom in a short, memorable format. Proverbs are simply yet 
profound, and many deal with the commonplace yet clarify the deepest realities of life. The Bible refers to the Proverbs as sayings of the wise or sayings and riddles of the wise. Proverbs 24 and 23 says that. Proverbs 1 and 6 says that. So since the book of Proverbs is part of the biblical wisdom literature, the Bible, it is appropriate to interpret its contents differently than, say, a historical account. This part, come close. It's important. Proverbs are not necessarily to be taken literally. And they are not promises. Rather, they are acknowledgement of a common reality. I'm going to prove it today. For example, whoever says to the guilty you are innocent will be cursed by peoples and denounced by nations. Proverbs 24, 24. Extensive experience tells us that sometimes a corrupt judge will actually gain more power and prestige instead of being cursed. But such cases are the exception and is not the rule. The Proverbs point is, in general, judges who allow the guilty to go unpunished will be seen as unjust and as detriment to society. So uh, there are Proverbs in the Bible found outside of the book of Proverbs itself in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus is the master of teachings in parables which we could consider an expanded proverbial form. He also said many uh, pithy sayings that have become common proverbs, for instance, turn the other cheek, go the second mile, not letting your left hand know what your right hand is, is doing, or casting pearls before swine, or serving two masters, or removing a speck but ignoring a log in your eye. And, of course, the golden rule. Arguably, Jesus' proverbial sayings are the most pervasive single corpus of such works in the world today, partly because of the uh, ubiquitous transitions or translations of the Bible and because of the value and wisdom of Jesus' words. So when you all are taking these words literal, every, a lot of them, you find yourself doing a disjustice to yourself and the people around you, and they look at you, look at you as you're silly and uneducated, and they look at you as also being a fool. So today, I wanted to look at a specific Proverbs that seemed like it's, it's battling against itself. Proverbs 26 and 4. Uh, let's see if we can find it here. All right, right here, Proverbs 26 and 4. Notice what it says. It's kind of weird, ain't it? Proverbs, don't answer the foolish arguments of fools or you will become as foolish as they are. Don't answer a fool. You will become fools. Uh oh, it's time to plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Don't answer the foolish arguments of fools. You become a fool yourself. That's wonderful, isn't it? But an atheist will, will keep reading and say, see, your Bible got a problem. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of the fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. What is the Bible contradicting itself here? It just told me don't answer the fool. And then the next verse, it says, be sure to answer the fool. What is it saying here? It's not a contradiction. It is the definition of biblical literature, uh, Jewish parallelism. And this is something that we've got to understand while we're reading the text, while we're trying to understand the Bible, and when we're talking to a fool who is an unbeliever. Proverbs has made uh, has much to say about fools. They despise wisdom. They are right in their own eyes. They are deceitful. They are scornful. The wise are also given instructions on how to deal with fools in Proverbs. Instructing fools, a fool, is pointless because his speech is full of foolishness. Full foolishness. <laughs> Proverbs 15 and 2. You just don't even answer him. And he does not want wisdom and understanding. Proverbs 18, 2. Right? Uh, the futility of trying to uh, 
impart wisdom to a fool is the basis of Proverbs 26, which I just read. First they say, don't answer. Then they say, do answer. All right. It tells us how to answer a fool. These seemingly contradictory verses are actually a common form of parallelism found in the Old Testament where one idea builds upon the other. Verse 4, warns against arguing with a fool on his own terms, lest we stoop to his level and become as foolish as he because he despises wisdom and correction. The fool will not listen to wise reason and will try to draw us into his type of argument, whether it is by his by using deceit, scoffing at our wisdom or becoming angry and abusive. If we allow him to draw us into this type of discourse, we are answering him according to his folly in the sense of becoming just like him. It makes sense, right? The phrase, according to his folly, in verse 5, I'm, now I'm reading in the NLT, so this is obviously King James Version that I'm, I'm reading here. According to his folly in verse 5, on the other hand, tells us that there are times when a fool has to be addressed so that his foolishness will not go unchallenged. In this sense, answering him according to his folly means to expose the foolishness of his works or his words, rebuking him on the basis of his folly so he will see the idiocracy, okay, or the idiocy of his words and reasonings. So our answer in this case is to be one of reproof, showing him the truth so he might see the foolishness of his words in the light of reason, even though he will most likely despise and reject the wisdom offered to him. We are to make the attempt both for the sake of the truth, which is always to be declared and for the sake of those listening that they may see the difference between wisdom and folly and be instructed. So it sounds contradictory to a person who doesn't know how to understand parallelism and who don't know how to interpret or comprehend text. Whether we use the principle of verse four and deal with the fool by ignoring him or obey, obey verse five and reprove a fool depend, depends on the particular situation. In matters of insignificance, it's probably better to disregard him. In more important areas, such as when a fool denies the existence of God, Psalms 14 and 1, verse 5 tells us to respond to his foolishness with words of rebuke and instruction. To let a fool speak his nonsense without reproof encourages him to remain wise in his own eyes and possibly gives credibility to his folly in the eyes of others. When this fool talks, you may have to address that fool. Why? Because I was telling you all that there was a woman at my church years ago who said that the devil will be saved in the last days. She was a fool. She walked up to the microphone, testified that she believed that, and the whole room, you heard a gasp. That fool right there needed to be addressed. If we had allowed that fool to leave that, drop the mic, and walk them back to their seat, it would have caused confusion in the house. And if none of the elders or the pastor would have addressed it, then we would have had a house who would have left there thinking that possibly the devil would be saved. So then verse five kicks in, be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation and others will think they're wise and then they'll follow them. And this is how we get people like Brian Song, Carnality, Juanita and her Bynum. And the list goes on and on. Fools. Fools rushing where wise men fear to tread. In short, in negligible, negl negligible <laughs> issues, big word, we should just ignore fools. 
But in issues that matter, they must be dealt with so that credence will not be given to what they say. This is how we know we should approach fools or when they approach us, how to talk to them. And here's the thing. You got to let the Holy Spirit lead you. You understand? You have to let the Holy Spirit lead you and show you whether you should talk to that fool or not. You may have to bridle your tongue or you may have to speak. Now that choice is yours, but I'm hoping that you choose to listen to the spirit, listen to that fool, either walk away or listen to that fool and then speak and shut that fool down. I hope this has helped you gain knowledge on how, what, when, where, and how. With that knowledge, please, please, please teach us to your children on how or how not to do it because it can save a lot of lives or it can destroy many others. Listen, thank y'all for listening to the show. All right. I don't know. Today is at the time this recording is Thursday. Uh, I, I may be done for the week. I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to record, but <laughs> by the time this Thursday, I'm sure I've already uh, had a couple shows or I already did. So blessings to you all. Pray for me as I go through this uh, this week of final exams. We're in the middle of uh, the semester. And then uh, after those two classes are over, I have two more classes to go for another eight weeks. And then we'll see what happens from there. God, thank you for your presence in this room. You're always here. I woke up and there you were. When I go to sleep tonight, there you will be. As I sleep in slumber, you never sleep. You never slumber. You watch me both night and day. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you for watching over me. Even when I leave your presence, I'm never out of your presence. I may leave you in my mind, but I never leave your presence or your sight because you are um, nigh science, yet you're also omnipresent. You're everywhere. So thank you for being with these people who are here, the people who are watching. I hope that they gathered the information, took down the scriptures, read it for themselves so they might be empowered themselves. Thank you for your love and for your protection. We love you. We give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Take care of yourselves. I got to get out of here. Running a little late. Uh, we're 22 minutes in. And uh, y'all hit the rewind button. Do me a favor. Go to the YouTube channel and hit the share button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification. Most people who watch the show are not subscribed to the channel. We typically do that with many of the YouTube channels out there. I know I do it by mistake as well. You bam, subscribe, and uh, you'll get the notification when we're live. All right, take care of yourself and one another. 